Okay, so now that we've been introduced to the space, or space-time rather, that we're going to be working with, we can start to explore some of its geometry. So to begin exploring the geometry of space-time, I'm just going to start by first examining the geometry of a space that we're hopefully going to be familiar with, which is the Euclidean geometry of real space, so not space-time. And then once we've explored this geometry, we're going to now make the leap to space-time geometry, or Minkowski geometry, and we're going to see essentially what the stark differences are between the two geometries, and then we can move forward and discuss some of the... So I'm going to begin by discussing the geometry of a space, not a space-time, just a space, that we're hopefully quite familiar with, which is going to be Euclidean geometry of a real space. And then once we've got used to this idea and seen how we formalise just standard Euclidean geometry, we can then make the leap to relativity and start discussing the space-time, or the Minkowski geometry. But for now, let's just stick with R3 and just go back to Euclidean geometry and forget about space-time, just very briefly. So let's talk about Euclidean geometry. So the Euclidean geometry, we're now going to... So let's study the Euclidean geometry of a, just a standard R. And now it could be any dimension that we like, let's just say D. So we know that this is a manifold. It's a fairly simple manifold. It's just a set of essentially real numbers and the chart functions are kind of pretty trivial. They just map the manifold R into another copy of RD. <coughs> So this alone as a manifold, we know, or rather as a topological space, it doesn't have any kind of specific quote-unquote shape. It's just this kind of collection of real lines all taken together in the Cartesian product. Hopefully you've seen what RD is. Taken together in the Cartesian product. And now we can... Effectively, since this is just a topological picture, we can stretch and scale these axes in any way that we would like. But now if we want to start defining some more structure on this kind of topological space, which doesn't really have the structure to start talking about things like physical distances, for example, we're going to need to define new structure or new objects on this space, and that's essentially going to give the space geometry. And in looser terms it's just going to kind of fix more geometric properties of the space like the distances between two points or the angle between two points. And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce essentially a new object on this space, an object which is essentially going to define the distance between any two points in the geometry. So if we say take any two arbitrary points, let's just pick two points on one axis for simplicity. These are just going to have two kind of number values, let's just say A and B. So how would we define the distance now between these two points? Well, in principle, it could be any crazy definition that you could come up with. We could say, okay, let's call this distance delta S. And now let's just make something up like delta S is equal to, well, the number B minus the number A. That seems fairly reasonable. We take this number value, and then we take this number value, and then we subtract them. It's going to give us another number value, which is kind of equal in length of the distance between these two points, if that number value is now taken to be measured from this kind of zero origin. So what I've introduced, this delta S, is just an example of something called a line element. So, so the line element effectively now represents this distance in our geometry. The actual physical number which is associated to that distance is still, in essence, arbitrary. We're just assigning it based on how we're choosing to define the line element. But we're going to see that this 
choice of line element essentially fixes the geometry of the space. And once we've chosen what line element we're going to use, we can then study the kind of geometry that that's going to produce. So this line element, which I've written here, is a fairly simple one. We just take this, the physical number b, which now, if you like, you can kind of think of as representing the distance from the origin point to the number b, because if you like, you can view the number b as being delta s b is effectively just being the distance from b with the point zero. So it's essentially just this distance there. And then if you define the distance a in the same way, then you can just subtract these two numbers and it's going to give you another number which is lying somewhere like that. And it's just kind of these simple intervals. We can then represent distances by essentially the, the difference between the intervals between two points. So this idea of Intervals is going to essentially be what we use to define all of our distances. We're just going to define some interval and then we're going to use those intervals to construct the line element. So that was just a fairly arbitrary assignment of a line element. Let's see how it actually happens in practice now with Euclidean geometry. So the way we define the line element in Euclidean geometry is we essentially use Pythagoras' theorem. Or we could say the other way around, that Pythagoras' theorem is just essentially the line element for real space. Okay, so we've seen how we can simply kind of talk about distances along a single axis using these kind of intervals. Now, how would we extend this in full generality to, say, talk about the distance between two arbitrary points in the geometry? I'm just going to draw them kind of free from axes for the for the moment. So let's for simplicity just say we're talking about, well I will draw you some axes, let's just say we're talking about an R2 geometry and these are two points in our geometry and we want to define essentially what is this distance between them. So I'll draw for you, this is delta S and now Hopefully you can already see where we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to essentially define this line element. We know we can construct this right triangle here. And now this bottom point of the right triangle we use as kind of like a reference point. And we can then look at the interval between these two points on the x-axis and then the interval between these two points on the y-axis, delta x and delta y respectively. And then the line element is obviously just given by Pythagoras' theorem. So we have delta s squared is delta x squared plus delta y squared. So hopefully this is very familiar and comfortable notion. This is simply how we define the distance of any two points in R3, or sorry, in R2, and if we now had our d, we would just have added onto this as many other coordinates as we have in our geometry. Okay, so this is Euclidean geometry. It's fairly simple and hopefully very familiar. We just simply take intervals, essentially because we're using real number values to represent our points, we can just subtract those real number values and it effectively represents a real number that is going to have the same length as that interval. So I'll just quickly summarise then. We use the notion of intervals to essentially define distances along an axis. We essentially take two points and then because they're just essentially represented by real numbers we can subtract the two real numbers and that's going to give us a real number which is going to kind of have the, the value of the length of this interval between the two points. And then using these intervals between points on a single axis, we can then construct any arbitrary distance in the geometry just using this simple Pythagorean picture here. So now let's make this fully general and let's say, okay, well these intervals I've written using the kind of 
delta symbol to kind of symbolise that this is a sort of finite interval, what we could do is we could instead not take a finite interval, but consider instead some kind of infinitesimally small interval, dx or dy, and then instead we can just simply use the exact same theorem to write the following formula, which is now kind of the infinitesimal version of this line element. It is what is actually more traditionally referred to as the line element, is this infinitesimal dx version. It's usually more customary to refer to this ds as the line element, not the delta s. Delta s is usually just called the interval, but this ds, now the infinitesimal interval, is what we usually call the line element. And now this ds is essentially representing an infinitesimally small distance in our geometry, and we construct it using this um, Pythagorean kind of method using these infinitesimally small coordinate differentials. So you should remember that dx is essentially, well, it's a one form, don't worry if you don't understand it fully, is a one form yet. You can just view it as being a kind of infinitesimally small amount of change in the dx or in the x coordinate. And we're going to see a lot more later the one form character that these dx's have. But for now, this is just the, the simple Euclidean picture of how we define distances, or now we like to define infinitesimal distances using these infinitesimal coordinate displacements. And now, of course, we can just take our infinitesimal displacement and integrate it, and we're just going to return back some finite interval or finite displacement.